So this is going to be a bit of an unscripted video because I just want to test out my new audio setup because I actually got a lavalier mic for once because the audio coming out of my phone is kind of a little bit eh, not, not really good. Video quality is pretty good, but audio quality a little bit weird with how I have to have the camera angled and it captures audio on one side but not the other so this is the machine that broke me because this is actually Ryan's machine Ryan Garrett if you don't already know him go subscribe to him he's an awesome person but this is his Tybook G4 this is a believe a 450 megahertz model but as we can see this thing is just in horrible shape all around lip is starting to come away the screen's a little bent paints as it is kind of just tr chipping off everywhere and this machine just outright broke me because even though i put in a lot of work and this is all permanent i think it doesn't want to come up and as we can see the lid is wanting to come away from the rest of the machine the hinges are basically kind of glued to this back panel i believe so but this is coming off it just hint kind of hints that the hinges are going to give up at some point so it really just made me sad because this machine initially didn't have a working display ryan ended up buying a new display for it and i went through all the trouble of putting it in and then that started happening so yeah i didn't want to face this machine after that and it's been sitting here for the better part of a few months now because i don't want to face this machine but on top of that i actually have somebody who has spare parts for this who was going to send them in to me but has been kind of dealing with some real life stuff so no harm no foul on that it just it happens so this machine is pretty destroyed the hinges seem to be holding even though it feels like they're gonna give up we have the bezel here with the old apple garamond the optical drive actually still works but as we can see the kind of palm rest here it's kind of coming away from the rest of the bezel here and yeah it's kind of cromulent but very rough around the edges you may be wondering where's the keyboard gone well the keyboard half of it didn't work it was kind of split down the middle it didn't want to work so i had the bright idea of dipping the thing in alcohol to try and see if there was any dirt in there that needed to be kind of sussed out and that was a bad idea because well it caused the keyboard to disintegrate so we had a bunch of keys just start floating off and it was a bad time and at that point i was just done with this machine but i do believe this machine still works i grab our no name power adapter here and snake it around the tripod plug it in at the back here We'll find that this machine should work. Well, it should work if the RAM were installed, which it isn't. So yeah, that's a fun time. Anyway, so this machine is now a parts machine because we have a new hotness, which I did not expect to get, but it did show up nonetheless. Another PowerBook G4 in much, much, much better condition. So this one is a DVI model. That one was a VGA model. As we can see, if we turn around back and we have this little port door here and Windows is gonna make a noise as it wants to do. We have our Firewire, Ethernet, two USB, DVI, S-Video Output, I believe, Composite Breakout. Uh, sound Input, I wanna say? Yeah, Sound Input and Modem because our sound output is right here on the side. So really fun machine that I did not expect to show up. It does have a little bit of cosmetic flaws here and there, like the screen is kind of a little off kilter here. But if we reach down and grab our power cable, because even though we have a battery in this machine, it does not work. The battery, <laughs> it's weird, the battery worked for a minute, but now it doesn't anymore. So that's kind of a little bit of a buzzkill, but what can you do? At least I have the battery so I can rebuild it if I so please. So open it very gently because the hinges on this thing, while they are perfectly cromulent at the moment, they are showing some signs of wanting to eventually let go. So here we have the palm rest, which is in almost perfect condition. This little bit over here is sinking. I guess that's a common problem with these. The keyboard is perfectly good. And you might have wondered where the RAM and the previous one went. It went right into here. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up. We already kind of gave it the tour. Not really much to see here. So we'll start it up. 
And in that case, it started right up. So now you need to see my mess of a desk, kind of, as it starts up. And this thing should start up pretty fast because I've actually got an SSD in here. The parts machine actually had an SSD in it because eventually that was going to go back to Ryan. And he gave me an SSD to put in there while I was working around in it. But he also got another one of these. So he doesn't want that machine anymore. It's now my problem. And here we are. So this thing is currently running 10.3.9. We have an 867 megahertz PowerPC G4. If we go to more info, we can open up System Profiler. And yep, G4 15 inch, 133 megahertz bus speed, one gig of RAM, which is the max this thing can take. Uh, both RAM slots are full. We have our AGP card or PCI card. I'm not sure what this uses internally. This uses AGP. It is a Radeon RV250, but it, it does have 32 megabytes of RAM. So quite nice to have. Then ATA we can see our Dogfish SSD which people use them and they do work in these older machines which is why we buy them. Of course while Mac OS 10 is very awesome and 10.3 has a lot of fun things that I remember from when I was running this when it was still relevant we didn't come here for Mac OS 10 and I don't have a lot of software that will run in Mac OS 10 at the moment so let's go ahead and bring this thing back to the past because one of the nice things about this machine is it will natively start Mac OS 9. So we can see it right here, Mac OS Z1, which is interesting nomenclature. However, I believe that's because I actually used my eMac restore disk on this. The eMac restore disk has the most recent version of 9.2.2 with all of the drivers you would possibly need installed because it was the final machine to actually run Mac OS 9 natively. Everything after that you had to run classic because it wouldn't natively boot anymore. So go ahead and do a restart and we'll let the machine boot 9.2.2. If Happy Mac was very much blink and you'll miss it, but this should be very fast because again, we are on an SSD and there we go. Now what's interesting is the battery is actually coming up full now. Huh, Let's, we'll see how well the mic actually picks up these noises. But anyway, I do have some games actually installed on here, so let's run a few of them. I do have Unreal. has everything copied over, so it should be able to just start without the CD being installed or mounted. You know, turn this down a fair bit. Eh, it's not going to matter. There's Unreal. Running pretty good. And because this is days before WASD were standardized. Uh, sorry, This runs perfectly as it should because this is an older game running on a much more modern system at the time. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just save that. We also have Tetris Max. Begin a new game with the really fun soundtrack. And oh wow, that actually stuck very quickly. I'm trying to remember the controls I had set. So we have StarCraft and a bunch of other stuff, but unfortunately, we have to mount some CDs for this stuff to work. So we have our little virtual CD-ROM utility here. Nothing new. And this is why I like to have big drives on these machines because I don't want to keep the discs around. So we're going to go ahead and play some Unreal Tournament. Which I believe I've never run this. So we'll see how it runs on this machine. Yeah, Rave. That's what ATI uses. Surprised I have not heard the fans kick in just yet.
This trackpad is very touchy. You know what? We can actually do something about this. To go with this machine, we have a pro mouse. So I'm not gonna actuate the hinge because I really don't wanna, well, I guess I will have to a little bit, but I don't wanna put any additional stress on it. But we should be able to just plug this in. And now we have a mouse. Not the best mouse. Oh, uh, you can hear that hinge just, uh, the hinge is just having a time already. Uh, good old hinge paranoia on these machines. All right. Now we have a working mouse, and the game does not know about it, so we have to restart the game. So let's just do a practice sesh. Let's make this one on one, why not? As you can see, this game just runs perfectly. Like, oh, that is like a silky smooth frame rate. This is the performance younger me dreamed about. Back when this machine was relevant, my primary machine was an old Pentium 3. And it had a not so good video card, so it didn't run anywhere near as well. Now the fans have come on, as expected. Anyway, we're not here to play Unreal Tournament, as fun as that would be. Let's do something a little more demanding. And by demanding, I mean completely unoptimized. Diablo 2 is a fun game that I've had lots of, just lots of memories with. But unfortunately, it is so ridiculously poorly optimized. Because as you'll see soon, it's locked at 25 FPS. So, we'll go single player. Get a little sorceress. More Eve is going to bother us. But I believe it's... No. They changed it over the updates because if you run the original version of this game, just typing FPS in single player will give you the FPS display. And I'm not sure you guys... Yeah, you guys cannot see it but currently are running at 25 fps with 25 skipped frames so it looks good but it's needlessly choppy now even if we were not playing expansion which we are one of the nice things about installing the expansion because when i used to play on ladder i didn't play expansion because just there was too much stuff to grind for. The grind was just, ugh, I never liked it. But I kept the expansion installed because it allows you to switch the resolution, as we can see. I usually kept the perspective off because it was just making things worse. Yeah, here we go. It's pretty stable. The frame skipping honestly doesn't look that bad. What's weird is on my 9600, it looks absolutely horrible. Even though that machine is more than capable of being able to run this game. Anyway, what's kind of fun is if we save and exit game, we can actually go to other multiplayer and we can start a TCP IP game. And if we host a game, you'll find something interesting here as it takes time to load. This machine is having a time now. So you may notice, now we're running at a smooth 60 FPS. Actually, we're running at 90 right now. So the fun part about the FPS lock is it only applies in single player. If you're playing multiplayer, the frame rate is completely unlocked. So really interesting, I find that. But now the problem is this game lags like you're actually playing on a network. Even though I'm hosting it from this machine, it still acts like I'm kind of playing it across dial-up almost. So I'm getting ping times of like 80 milliseconds. You can't see it, but I can. And it's just... 
I think what's going on is this machine's hosting a server in the background and it's having the game client connect to the server kind of like how Minecraft will do it if you're hosting a server on the machine you're playing on. It'll have a server instance in the background and the game client then connects to it. So your machine is now pulling double duty of hosting a server and playing the game at the same time. Not very fun, but I... I am still yet to see below 60 FPS. So, if I command click, I get my secondary because I've only got one button here. Ah, but I've lost enough of my life to this game, so we're going to go on to something else. This thing is definitely sweating now. So, another fun game I like to play on the, these machines, but this one does not work so well, is Full Tilt. And this is the full version of Space Cadet, which you had on Windows Millennium. So, the problem here is this will not run on newer machines. The system is too fast for the game, and it kind of just gets locked up here. The only table that actually works in the Full Tilt suite is Skullduggery for some reason. I've had the least trouble with this table. It might not actually work in here because uh, this is a G4 machine, but we'll see. Yeah, I think even this machine is a little too fast for Skullduggery. Normally, this, this table is the most forgiving of anything. Yeah, interesting. We also have StarCraft, which this window has gone off somewhere. I remember when he had to toggle these options because machines back then really could not multitask effectively, even with games. It blew my mind back when I was able to actually get a machine that would let me play music and actually play a game at the same time. Single player, expansion. And StarCraft actually works. really fast too Your <laughs> but this is really a low demand game so I mean not too surprising that it actually works pretty well what I eventually want to do is actually load this machine up and uh, any other machine with some creative stuff like Bryce or something to actually make some art with this. So to wrap up the video, we are going to do one more thing. And I'm actually going to mute the system because this is a audio disc with very copyrighted music on it. Let's go ahead and put that in and um, we'll have you listen to just have a little bit of fun here. But as you can kind of see here, the CD does in fact work. The optical drive functions normally. Very, very nice for an old machine like this. I usually expect the optical drive to be completely hosed. Let's wrap up by doing a test real quick because as we can see, the battery is in fact fully charged. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's actually running without the, the power adapter plugged in. Neat. The battery thing says zero minutes remaining so it's probably going to die very quickly here so i'm just gonna plug that right back in that's actually saying like one hour two hours interesting this is very interesting i don't think the machine is going to actually last that long unless the time displayed here is actually in minutes seconds which it could very well be currently consumption is like really high because it's running the fans as well so let's go ahead and just move all this out of here yeah the battery is actually lasting for a minute <laughs> shocker that concludes the video hopefully you enjoyed this little impromptu thing and kind of uh the test of my lavalier mic so till next time i'll see you guys later and like if you liked it dislike if you disliked it and go ahead and give me a subscription if you are not subscribed already till next time i'll see you later